a capitalist system that is pauperizing our country and increasing poverty at a very dangerous level. Now, comrade has started by referring to section 16. In fact, a subsection there says the economy system, the state shall ensure that the economy system is not operated in such a way as to concentrate the wealth of the country in the hands of a few or a group. Now, when Dan Gote was said to be building an refinery, and I've said it publicly, the government of Nigeria gave him land free. They call it free economic zone for themselves. All the machinery imported free, I mean, uh, at official rate, which is illegal. No duty was paid for the entire machinery, duty waiver. And the government went to the bank to take a loan of $2.7 billion to invest in the private sector. And they then said, we cannot fix our refinery. And that's the we challenge them. You say government have no business in business. Why are you funding a private enterprise? It was at that stage that they allocated $1.5 billion to fix Portacol refinery, $1.4 billion to fix Kaduna and Wari refinery. Come President of Nigeria and the please I beg you, second assignment. You must get the relevant unions to monitor the ongoing rehabilitation of the refinery. Otherwise, these guys would divert the money criminally, as they have always done for the past 35 years. Secondly, those refineries are no longer enough for us. Refineries are being sold in Europe and America. The government must buy some of them and assemble them here so that we can earn money, revenue, from our own natural resource. Comrade has spoken about uh, solid minerals. Labor must also take cognizance of what is going on. They give licenses to individuals to go and mine and pay a pittance to the government. Sometimes you don't pay anything. I'm, I'm handing a case where the government said, don't pay for five years what to encourage you from one block where they're mining gold in Malaysia. And the company will make $500 million in one year. No tax. But the poor are asked to tighten their belt even when they are dying. Now, the second point, <laughs> we may be gathered here discussing democracy. Democracy is under threat in Africa. Very serious. I'm sure you know what happened yesterday. You know what happened last month. And it's going to continue. Oh, yes, there's no apology about it. I can predict with mathematical, mathematical exactitude the next country, very close to us, that we experience in cool very soon. We are a man currently suffering from dementia who has been in power since 1982. What did he do yesterday because of what happened in uh, Gamma? Let me change the commander of the army. You are deceiving yourself. There was a coup, attempted coup in 2019 in Gabon. The guy survived, but you know what has happened? Yesterday, he also suffers from stroke and dementia. He didn't know what, where he was. He said, I don't know where I am. But please help me. That is what they have reduced Africa to. You need not to have seen that guy when there was very insulting things they are making, going to Europe to meet about Africa. Afro, uh, Franco, Afro summit. The guy couldn't walk. And none of his colleagues in the club of African dictators, African Union, none of them will say, gentlemen, why don't you resign and let a functional person take over the affairs of your country? This guy had strokes since 2009. With the wealth of that country, he couldn't establish a hospital. He was in Britain for years. And then went to Morocco. Just like Mububu Tesesepo, 35 years in power, no hospital. Ayadema, 
was being flown to Israel after 33 years in office. He couldn't fix a hospital like this. This gang of looters here. And that is what they have made of Africa. So please, uh, I think uh, Shane was talking about some comparison. Shane, up to three years ago, all the member states of ECOWAS were under one form of civil rule or another. Don't call them democratically elected government. Civil rule. Three years ago. But what has happened? We have recorded four. The number is ongoing. Charge. Now, Gabon, they are all close to us. But what is the link between Nigeria and, Char and Gabon? How many Nigerians are there? If you must know. Many Nigerians are trading in Gabon. We have a lot of relationship. That country is one of the richest in Africa. It's the fifth largest producer of oil. The population is 2.3 million. Everybody should be living like a king. But the poverty rate is 33%. In that country, small country, the old Mabongo, the Bongo, took over the country with their friends. Buying riches, we have houses all over the world, including France, particularly. Uh, Nigeria has a GDP of 4,900 now, as of 2020. Why Gabon? The per capita is $14,000. But why poverty rate? Why 40.1% of Nigeria live below poverty level in Gabon? It's 33%. That's why you had the coup. And like I said, Senegal is the only country that has not experienced a coup in West Africa. But if care is not taken, that country will go under soon because you are the man. Mark Hall, who said he wanted a third time. And people said, no, we chased out President Abdullah Wab and you took advantage. Now you want a third time. The people of Senegal have defeated him on the street. You know what he's doing now? He wants to plant his own agent. So the main opposition leader, he got him on a Trump charge of rape. He's in jail. So that country is in trouble. None of these guys, eh, including those who are planning to invade Niger, none of them will say preventive diplomacy. Can we talk to these our colleagues to allow democracy in this country. One of them came here two weeks ago, and I was just laughing, from Central African Republic, to pledge the loyalty of ECOWAS, I mean, uh, uh, the Central African Republic, to say we are with you in invading Niger. We want democracy. In this country, the guy had just removed judges who told him it is illegal to work with all that. Central African Republic, the country of uh, Bokassa. Now, he removed the judges who gave that ruling and manipulated this way for a third time. The guy in Cote d'Ivoire saying, Nigeria, please let us invade Alassane Quattara. You know how he imagined that the whole of Africa, the entire people of that country, over 3,000 people were killed for him to emerge. Now he's currently having his own third time. And none of these guys condemn him. Twice now, ECOWAS has attempted to fix the time. Two terms for president. In 2015, it was defeated by Togo and the Gambia. In 2022, last year, it was defeated by Togo, Senegal, and Cote d'Ivoire. Now, the guy in Togo also expressed something soon. In Togo, he and his father have been in power since 1963. Just like this guy who has just been removed, he and his father have been in power for 56 years. Even if you are a traditional ruler, there are people who are waiting for you now. For you, one ruling house, we call them ruling house. One ruling house can never be allowed to spend 56 years in the African traditional, you know, political system. So why are these guys pretending that we are running a democracy? And for here, please do. Honorable Senator, please do be careful. This is a good senator, be careful. Don't provoke Nigerians to mutiny. me. Please. Because some of the things going on there are we're in trouble. Sir, 70 billion naira for palliatives for 469 people. 
And when we, when we say no, they say no. It's for face lift of the National Assembly. No, sir. Three years ago, 37 billion naira was the amount for face lift of the National Assembly. That contract has not been fully executed. There is no review of the contract. So you can't talk of 70 billion naira for face lift. Secondly, 40 billion naira to buy exotic cars now. Now, for leadership of the National Assembly. It's not going to be allowed. The latest provocative news from the National Assembly is that 54 billion naira has been amassed for constituency projects for 360 members of the House of Reps. It has come to 150 million per person. Under this austere conditions in town. So when these figures are losing out of the National Assembly, Nigerians are being provoked. And elements, enemies of democracy are being provoked. The military has been honest to say we are under pressure. You didn't read it. To dismantle this rickety political system. But somebody told them, go and deny it. And they deny it. Oh, we are not under pressure. But we can read between the lines. And that is why we can't gather here talking of democracy that is under threat. That's number two. Number three, comrade, lecturer, I agree with you, there are solutions to all these problems. So the immediate causes of coups in Africa today, thought and syndrome, manipulation of constitution, military bases. You know, today, America has 29 military bases in Africa. France has 15. Soldiers are protesting because these foreign members of these foreign bases are receiving salaries as if they are in their country. And they are living above the ordinary soldiers in Africa. So the soldiers are also protesting the differential treatment between them and these foreign troops. So we must look at that. And of course, they have told you the remote causes. I uh, know the remote causes are the ruthless exploitation of the mineral resources of our country by Western companies. Let, lately, Chinese companies have joined them. They loot the treasury. Just like Commander said, nine billion dollars worth of gold. Smuggle out of Nigeria yearly. Not by the poor, but by the rich. With private jets and helicopters. And so, what do you expect? The people are getting poorer. And they're also destroying the land where they mine resources, just like oil. Sir, the oil thieves are known. You can quote me, and I want to be true by Shell is one of them, is the leading oil thief in Nigeria. Uh, Tompolo discovered recently, you know, when the state has collapsed, you deal with non state actors. The military could not trace oil thieves. So they had to give a contract to a private citizen, uh, government Tompolo, in the government in the area now. He discovered that an oil block, um, a pipeline, stealing 40,000 barrels of crude oil per day for nine years belongs to Shell. And Shell came out to say, we are not aware, no, under the law. That is criminal negligence. But I also know that in the, in the office of Shell, they have an application where they monitor what goes on in all their pipelines. And I suggested to the government, the Buhari government, with this discovery, can you please allow me, without charging Nigeria, to collaborate with some consortium of lawyers abroad for us to sue Shell for that act. Because to cheat an individual, you get a certain money. But to cheat, to cheat a sovereign nation is a hundred percent. So, and I told them, Nigeria can make hundred billion dollars if you sue Shell for mining and stealing oil for nine years. You know what I was told? I said, you know, it will be difficult because some of our people are involved. I said, 
Let them, let's share. Come and say that thing. Huh? That we have other criminals who are not alone. But what is important for us, and I think that is the point the comrade has made, we must revisit this matter. Because the NSA, Mr. Nuru Rivadu has just disclosed to us that 400,000 barrels are stolen daily. That cannot happen in a state, in a modern state that functions. When a state cannot guarantee peace, law and order, it's not fit to be a state. Now, the other point, sir. Fat distribution. Please, comrade, I beg you. You must take note of this. In April this year, about 646 billion was shared by the three tasks of government. In July and August, over 900 billion. Over 900 billion. Yet, what have these people thrown at us? Five billion per state. Five billion per state? A, a, a state like Kano or Lagos. And five billion for a city state or Safara state. The money is not meant for the poor. It's meant for the governor. And that is why it has been given to them to manage. So we must ask questions. Five billion from what? If you are now taking over 300 billion naira per month as a result of the increase in the prices of uh, fuel, the other one, I thought Comrade was going to, yes, I think you touched it, the dollarization of the economy. Today, somebody asked me, the bourgeois economy is yesterday. Mr. Talano, you're a lawyer. Why are you talking of dollarization? Dollarization is when a state adopts the dollar as a legal tender. I said, are you okay? In Nigeria today, the central bank has allowed the rich to sell properties in eyebrow area in dollars, to collect rents in dollars, school fees of some schools in dollars, charges for services by government in dollars, lawyers and some professionals, charge fees now in dollars, talking of big boys, oh it's dollars, in the ongoing election petition, you don't take naira, how much is naira? <laughs> now, to bribe in Abuja now, you know it's in dollars, because you can't carry it now. You know, you can't go through the bank. So it's easier to transact that criminality through the dollar. Uh, uh, you are not aware at the National Assembly, uh, distinguished senator who agree with me. It's in dollars now. <laughs> now, now, no, you know why I know? Some people are charged for being in possession of dollars. They call it money laundry. So they come to us, so I, I know what I'm talking about. And you know that uh, um, some, uh, what do you call it? The, the PDP and APC conventions in Abuja here, yeah. delegates were paid in dollars. Because yeah. you can't be carrying big money, Naira, for them. The most dangerous suspect now is that tithes are paid in some churches in dollars. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. And then some musicians have spread, have spread the dollars. It happened in the villa recently. When the daughter of the former president was getting married, musicians were spreading dollars. So, dollars has become the legal official tender. Legal tender in Nigeria. We are at Section 20 of the CBN Act has criminalized the act of spending dollars in Nigeria. But nobody has been arrested for spending dollars in our country. In fact, some government agencies now charge dollars for services and goods. But how do we come out to, how do we get to this mess? Because the rich wants to destroy our currency. The currency of a country is like your flag. You can go to war. But for them, the Naira is no longer worth it. Because the IMF and World Bank discovered that Nigerians will fight devaluation of the currency. So they then sold the idea to the people in the central bank. Can you dollarize the economy so that devaluation will be true dollarization? So last week, 
you wanted to buy any particular good, and you have your money. I think it was Fela that sang this song, very sad. And you plan your plan. He said, you plan your plan finished. You want to go to market. By the time you had the budget, but by the time you got to the market, the thing has gone up. And that is what is going on. So all of us do not know that through the dollarization, goods and services are being increased quietly in Nigeria. You know, they deceive us two weeks ago. When the thing went to 950, oh, we are going to do something. So the central bank illegally took a loan of $3 billion and said, please, we want to show up the current. What is the business of a private company? The NMPC is no longer a parastata. It's now NMPC Limited. And they deceived us. Oh, the thing will stabilize now. So for one week, it went to 780. Today, it's 780 officially. Meanwhile, they said, no, no other exchange rate now, apart from, apart from one. Today, black market, as of this morning, is 918 naira to a dollar. Yet, when you were teaching us, your generation of teachers, it was 60 cover to one dollar. So we must begin to ask questions. Labor, it's no longer enough, sir, to go and ask for minimum wage. Even if they pay you 200,000 naira as minimum wage, it's meaningless now. And that is why we must ask questions about the dollarization of the economy. The only solution, only one country, except five years ago, the Central Bank of China and Nigeria sat down. Can we have currency swap? Whatever you buy there, Naira, whatever we do here, Yon, the Central Bank caught me and said it publicly. IMF and World Bank said, no, don't allow it to work. So most Nigerians are not aware of that arrangement. Last year alone, we spent $22 billion for imports from China. In dollar, we are asked we should have paid Naira. And that would have reduced the chain rate to something in the neighborhood of 300 to 500 Naira. And we're supposed to do that with other countries. And that's what BRICS is about, government. BRICS. The BRICS, I'm sure you know the organization. They simply want to trade among themselves in their own national currencies. Nigeria said we have not joined up. We don't want to join because of the West. But I've told somebody in government, can you be more Catholic than the Pope? Saudi Arabia is, Saudi Arabia is in. Egypt is in. UAE is in. But Nigeria is still pretending. How can Nigeria be missing in Africa? Why well, you should be leading the campaign to get African countries to trade in their own currency. We have after African free trade zone. We are supposed to have one currency in Africa, trade among ourselves. We are supposed to have echo in ECOWAS. France says no. Why are countries like United Nigeria insisted? France said no problem. We are now taking over the echo. France has taken over echo because they control its countries there. Now, what do we now do? Is to say we have taken over echo. So whether we like it or not, we are going to impose our condition, which is that the Apple currency will be printed in France. And all your foreign reserves will be banked by the Bank of France. Of course, Nigeria will not agree. So they cannot have one currency. So the dollar is the currency for everybody. Now the other point. Please, for NSC, I want to beg you. It's no longer enough to ask for better Minimum wage. Comrade has mentioned it, and I'm going to advise you. There are laws you have fought for to improve the conditions of workers and the poor in Nigeria. And laws have to pass, Comrade, following Chapter 2 of the Constitution. It's no longer correct to say Chapter 2 is not justiciable. Laws have been passed to actualize Chapter 2. The National Minimum Wage is one of them. National Minimum Wage Act. People's Banks Act to give loans to the poor without collateral. They themselves took loan and they were going to collapse the economy. That was how AMCO was set up. The rich are owing the country 5.4 trillion today, 370 of them. So when they didn't allow 
People's bank to come to be reestablished. I went to court. I got the judgment in 2012. Go and establish this bank for the poor. They refused to do it. We have the Child's Rights Act in Abuja and Child's Rights Law in the state. Under those two laws, every Nigerian child shall be educated up to junior primary school, free of charge by the Nigerian state. So, comrade, we have to make sure that every Nigerian child, 20 million Nigerian children are on the street. That is where the terrorists recruit. Bandits recruit, arm robbers, and the rest of them. So if we get this law implemented, there will be little or nothing to steal by these guys. But these are the laws they have made. You have the Pension Reforms Act. It must work. National Housing Act. They deduct money of workers every month. But they have stolen about 100 billion from that fund. Comrade, we need to take this up. You have the National Health Insurance Act that everybody should have insurance, health insurance. You have National Health Insurance Authority Act for the elderly in Nigeria. Once you are over 60, you are entitled to health insurance. By law, you have other laws, discrimination against persons with disability, 2018. That law provides that all physically challenged people shall be educated by the state from primary to secondary school, senior secondary school, free of charge. So comrade, you must set up a committee that will ensure the implementation of this law so that when you are talking of minimum wage, there are ways of ensuring that you don't spend all your minimum wage on uh, 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 services for your family that will not be sufficient. They now say, that our last two people, our take home cannot take us home. It's only when we have these laws implemented that your take home will be able to take you home. The last point is some public interest litigation coming. Uh, we are engaged in a number of public interest litigation. But you are dealing with a government, a, a, a ruling class that has no regard for rule of law. Sarah Panengio has got a judgment to defend that. Since 1999, all the government of Sakan for the $5 billion recovered from Abacha and the family. The government has ignored the law. Serap has got a judgment that those funny pension for governors, the attorney general should ensure that all those governors do not collect double pension. There are people in the National Assembly, sir, in the Senate, former governors who are collecting the stupendous allowances in the National Assembly, who are also collecting pension in their state. Three states, Lagos, Abuja, no, Lagos, Rivers, and Kwapaido, have pension schemes that you cannot find anything like it in any part of the world. Do you know the details? If you govern in Lagos, Port Harcourt, or you, you, even for four years, you are entitled to a house in the state capital and a house in Abuja. What about two billion naira? Two for your life, even if you are 40 or 36. For life, you and your family will be entitled to free medical treatment at home and abroad. For life, you will earn the salary of a sitting governor. For life, they will replace your cars, about three cars, once in three years. For life, you will have about eight security personnel to guide you and your family. Now, I have, I have told you, Governor, if you go like this, by the time Lagos has produced 20 governors, or Akwaibon, there will be no money for development. Once you are paid pension of 20 gov former governors, and that is why labor must please join this campaign from the action of the civil society group, the progressive faction, Sanfara, Imo, and Kwara have abolished the pension scheme. So we must get other state governments to abolish the pension scheme so that everybody is under the Pension Reforms Act. There's no way you run a state for three years and then for a year, 
After four years, you collect about 300 million naira, you know. And then in the National Assembly, you collect money. Or if you're a minister, you collect money. Whereas it is dangerous for a worker to collect double salary. But these guys are collecting multiple salary. Let, let me end by saying some comments. And I think we must take a resolution here today. Yeah. That the Labour Party, and you see, there is a pending order of court. And I should disclose this. It's a pending order of court. That the faction of the NSC and the faction of the PDP that attempted to take over the Labour Party shall hold a joint convention where leaders will be elected. I'm not talking of Aburi and uh, Abamba. And that must happen as soon as possible. So that Nigerian workers can take over their own affairs to contest for power. But I'm not saying contest for power like the bourgeoisie. It must be along some of the things we have said. So that this country, the largest concentration of black people on earth, will not remain the largest poverty nation on earth. And comrade, you have the right, you have the duty to do this. You cannot allow these guys to ruin the country. NMPC has said, sir, gave us three billion. Again, I've just sent a letter to the government. NSC has cornered NMPC L has cornered 33.5 billion dollars from LNG in the last 20 years. That money must go to federation account. On uh, uh, London Party Club Fund, comrade, I'll make some information available. All the state governors, apart from Delta, stole the London Party Club for, for local governments. I know one state, a poor state, where the governor cornered 2.4 billion belonging to state government. Our gun is fighting this currently, Mr. President. We must join. Have that money refunded so that we can see some benefits in the local government. So I would like to thank you for this opportunity, Comrade, and to wish the Nigerian Labour Congress full food and liberation. Thank you, Mr. Fala.